सो इन द प्रीवियस लेक्चर वी हैव लर्न हाउ टू यूज प्रोजेक्शन ऑपरेटर टू एस्टिमेट द सिमिट्री अडेप्टेड लीनियर कॉम्बिनेशन आउट ऑफ अ गिवन सेट ऑफ अटोमिक ऑर्बिटल्स सो नाउ दैट वी नो हाउ टू कंस्ट्रक्ट एस एल सीज नाउ लेट सी हाउ डू वी यूज दीज एस एल सीज टू डेवलप द वेव फंक्शन टू डिस्क्राइब द केमिकल बॉन्डिंग सो बिफोर वी एक्चुअली डू दैट लेट एस हैव अ स्लाइट रिफ्रेशर ऑन what is chemical bonding and all so let's start with lecture 35 and we will be trying to understand the relation between symmetry and chemical bonding so we are well aware of that atomic orbitals possess certain symmetry right that is they can form bases for a given irreducible representation ir representation under a point group now point group will be dependent on the molecular shape so also when we we know that if two atoms so this is let's say this is atom 1 and this is atom 2 when two atoms are combining to form a chemical bond this is my chemical bond so symmetry plays a great role here symmetry plays we will see how in establishing what interactions will take place and what will not okay so we will see how symmetry comes into this picture but symmetry has a great role in forming the chemical bonds okay so this is what we already know i am not uh, telling anything new this is all we already know so what we will be going to use is that uh, symmetry and uh, group theory can be rigorously used to construct appropriate wave functional description of of the bonding in the molecules okay so this we are going to see how to do that and what else we can do using this theory we can use construct hybrid orbitals that are helpful in reconciling the molecular shape for example why ch4 is tetrahedral and so on so we will see that so hybrid orbitals will be constructed with the atomic orbitals for example one sn 3p orbitals combined to give a hybrid 4 sp3 hybrid orbitals that are oriented along tetrahedral geometry in carb ch4 right hybrid orbitals that are available for bonding so we will also see construction of that will come later but uh, not in this lecture construction of molecular orbitals for the entire molecule so in general we know that so again this is just a refresher i'm sure you all know this in general the bonded state can be described by
the famous Schrodinger equation uh, Hi equal to E Psi where we all know this H is the Hamiltonian Psi is the state function and the eigenfunction and E is the energy of that particular state right. So now we can solve this equation for simple molecules like H2 but typically it is not easy and straightforward to solve to first set up it correctly for more complex molecules and then solving is uh, another uh, step which is uh, not possible for because it is very very difficult to invoke all sorts of interactions in a molecule so typically what is done is it is uh, i will write it is customary to construct approximate wave functions for the molecule from the atomic orbitals right so we use the given atomic orbitals and we construct the the molecular orbitals from those and from the atomic orbitals of the interacting atoms you can say so what happens in this approach if two atomic orbitals combine in a constructive way we can say that the result is build up of electron density so atomic orbitals are described by wave functions so wave functions have positive phases and negative phases if two positive phases are going to interact there would be a it's like simple addition of waves right so there would be a enhancement of uh, electron density in that area if two opposite phases of atomic orbitals will interact then there would be a loss of electron density and the corresponding interaction is called as bonding and anti bonding right and if there is uh, no change in electron density upon combination of atomic orbitals then it is called as non bonding interaction right so we'll see that how it works out so the extent of let us the extent of a uh, overlap of atomic orbitals of let's say atom a and b so nature and effectiveness will depend on the extent of overlap and thus we can say nature and effectiveness or the strength if we can say of their interaction is given by slater overlap integral so what is slater overlap integral it is defined as s then the integration of psi a where psi a is the wave function describing the atomic orbital of atom a and psi b and over d tau of course there is going to be boundary conditions and all so now we can say that if s is positive then the overlap results in bonding interactions which is again characterized by build up of electron density 
if S is negative, it is anti-bonding interaction. And if S is equal to zero, it is possible, right? Then it is non-bonding interaction. So now to understand this, let us actually take, draw the balloon diagram of these orbitals, which will help us understand how this works out, how the bonding and anti-bonding and non-bonding interactions work out. So let me just draw first the balloon representations. The first is the S orbital. So S orbital is typically drawn like a sphere. Let's call this as, and then it will have a positive phase altogether. All through it will be positive phase. So remember that this is a wave function. The so wave functions will have plus phase and minus phase. Then we have, let's say, px, py, pz orbitals. So this is my x, y, and z, and then I'll call it as plus and minus, right? This is px. So I'll write it as px. Similarly, I can have py, balloon diagram for py. So then you will have x, y, z. So in some books, you will see that the positive and negative phases of these lobes are different colors, basically. So you will see that positive is shown in dark phase, dark color, or negative is shown in dark color, or either way. Or in some books, you will see just the plus and minus, because these are basically just the phase of this uh, wave functions, right? So similarly for PZ, we have x, y, z, you will have plus and minus. While we are doing this, let us also quickly draw for, just to remember, for all 5D orbitals. So for x, y, minus x, minus y. So I'm drawing this. So Z is coming out of the plane of the board. So I'm not drawing Z axis here. So the lobes are going to be in between the axis and this is positive. This is positive, negative, negative. Okay. So this is D X Y. Then you have yz right so we can have yz like this minus y minus z and again this will be in between so it is very easy to see that which lobe will be positive the positive side of the two axes if these are multiplying this will give you positive sign the two negative sides, if they are multiplying, they will give you a positive sign. One negative and one positive, this will give you a negative because the multiplication is negative and then so on, right? So this is just a simple thumb rule. This applies for everything. So here, positive side of x-axis will be positive, negative side of x-axis will be negative and so on and so forth. So also draw it for x, z, x, z, minus x minus it again this will be minus and now let's also draw for the rest of the 2d orbitals which will be the dz square and then there is a ring of negative phase over here like this so you have negative here and positive positive here this is called as d z square and the actual functional form if you want to write in terms of cartesian coordinates you can also write it as 
टू जेड स्क्वायर माइनस एक्स स्क्वायर माइनस वाई स्क्वायर ओके सो फॉर द कैलकुलेशन पर्पजेज इट इज टेकन लाइक दिस इट इज टेकन इन द कंप्लीट फॉर्म दिस इज एक्स वाई सेट ओके एंड फॉर एक्स वाई सेट द लास्ट वन इज टी एक्स स्क्वायर माइनस वाई स्क्वायर विच विल बी अलॉन्ग द एक्सेस नाउ Now this will be x will be positive, y will be negative, right? Because we have y square as negative, x square as positive. So now that we know how this works, let us try to see different bonding interactions. So bonding where s will be greater than zero, and then let's also look at the corresponding anti-bonding. where s is less than 0 okay now let's say that our interaction is between 1s and 2pz so positive side positive side negative side this is 2pz this would be called as sigma and if my s is interacting from the other side you have negative positive 2pz 1s this would be called as sigma star right you must have seen that in when you describe the bonding pictures so bonding formation bonding interaction anti bonding interaction okay so now let's also see let's say if you have dx square minus y square and 2px so d x square minus y square will look like this where we have positive side that is x and negative side that is y so this is d x square minus y square and you have 2px so this will be sigma because now there is a build up of electron density over here when you combine these two orbitals these two lobes over here whereas if you do it the other way around this will be anti bonding right plus plus minus minus and you have negative positive so this will be sigma star 2p x 3d x square minus y square okay so similarly so uh, these are sigma and sigma star these type of interactions are basically we can say that these are symmetric with respect to i can write it here symmetric with respect to c2 collinear with the internuclear axis nuclear axis so that is if you pass an axis through this this is my internuclear axis and you do a c2 operation this will be symmetric right so uh, sigma sigma star interactions are symmetric with respect to c2 which is collinear with internuclear axis now let us look at the pi pi star interactions so pi pi star interactions will be sideways interaction of these lobes so for example if i have pz interacting with pz and i have positive phase interacting with positive phase negative interacting with negative then this would be called as pi interaction again the s will be greater than 0 here because this is bonding interaction and now if you have i can write here s greater than 0 or bonding this will lead to pi bond this will lead to sigma bond now if you have opposite phases of the two orbitals interacting then you have positive negative negative positive this will be called as pi star s will be 
less than zero, this will be anti bonding, right? So now, if we see this, if we now run a C two through this, this will be anti symmetric. Anti symmetric. That is the character under C two operation will give you a negative sign, negative one with respect to C two. And if we say sigma v, which is coplanar with the nodal plane, coplanar with nodal plane. So if you draw C two versus sigma v, this uh, C two and sigma v. The sigma v will be coplanar with nodal plane and this will be anti symmetric so that is the character under these two symmetry operations will be in minus 1 so we know what is anti symmetric what is symmetric with respect to a given symmetry operation now let us also look at non bonding interaction for which s will be equal to 0. So, this is just again a balloon representation example. So, let us say if I have p orbital oriented like this and s orbital oriented like this. So, this will be positive positive and positive negative. So, there is no change in electron density. So, this will give you s equal to 0 or non bonding interaction. Similarly, you can also have between two p orbitals like this way. So, here also it is positive positive and positive negative interaction which will cancel out each other and this will be called as non bonding interaction. Let us also consider d orbitals overlapping form interacting with d orbitals. This is mostly seen in case of metal metal complexes. Let us say if we have a sorry for the bad drawing so let's say if this is my d orbital and on top of that i have another d orbital with same lobes something like this now those will also have same signs then this will be called as delta and if you have opposite signs negative negative positive positive and you have instead of positive here you will now have negative of black positive of black positive and negative so this will be called as delta star interaction okay so these are typically seen in metal metal bonding So, and these are symmetric with respect to C2 and anti symmetric with respect to C4. So, uh, and the C2 is basically collinear with the z axis z axis is coming out of the plane of the board so for example this one is d x square minus y square d x square minus y square interacting with the same thing we can also have d x y interacting with d x y and so on all right so this gives you a brief introduction of what is chemical bonding in next lecture we will take up uh, different theories for example valence bond theory and uh, molecular orbital MO theory. So, we will see how symmetry and group theory rules and symmetry adapted linear combinations can be used to describe the wave functions in case of both of these theories. That is all for today. So, see you in next class. Thank you.